Yusuf has got the biggest ego you will ever, ever, ever see in a man. He thinks he is the best at everything. He is. No matter what you've done, where you've been, he's done it and he's done it better. He's the best skier. He's the best racing driver. He's the best boxer. He's the best market operator. He's the best in bed. He's the best at life. He's the, got the best girlfriend. He's got the best car. like God. We're talking about me here. Yeah. This is so, my show. Narcissists tend to gravitate to certain professions where they can garner narcissistic yeah. supply. Attention, adulation, admiration, sense of power, being feared. So narcissists and psychopaths are overrepresented in professions such as politics, yeah. the clergy, uh, show business, the media, no offense, uh, and so on. It's so alright to be arrogant as long as you're not ignorant. New word for the day. Ostentatious. The attempt to attract attention to oneself. Who? Me? This particular person feels like they deserve a little more attention than the rest of us, and we are going to grant them that precious narcissistic supply, right away. This is your host Amanda and today we're exploring the fascinating world of narcissistic personality disorder. Contrary to what we might wrongfully believe, narcissists are not in love with themselves. According to the Greek myth of Narcissus, we know this character fell in love with his own reflection in the water. This is an important distinction, that people seem to misunderstand, leading to a common misconception. The metaphor of Narcissus' reflection in the water refers to people's availability to validate him. In other words, narcissists' identity is poorly delineated, and their goals are exclusively set with reference to the other people, with the intention of impressing them, and getting their approval. Without it, well, a narcissist has a serious problem, and there's no telling what would happen. Nevertheless, narcissists' lack of empathy hinder their understanding of other people's feelings, so their relationships will be marked by a profound superficiality. Thank you so much. I gotta get you a gift or something. Sometimes the best gift is the gift of never seeing you again. Okay, all right. In fact, for them, the other people are nothing more than objects which help them look good, in order to win the approval they yearn for. An awfully defective mechanism of orientation like this, determines a conflictual and labile nature in which grandiosity and attention-seeking are dominant features. I guess any team that I'm not on has a decided disadvantage. <laughs> Here's a dictionary of terms, designed to support a better understanding of this personality disorder. The false self is a defense mechanism, that consists in a deceitful but amazing story, which a narcissist makes up and expects the people around them to believe, and even play a role in it. This process is needed in order to compensate for the narcissist's inner emptiness and the lack of an adequately delineated identity. Thus, the narcissist becomes a sect leader who, supposedly, has supernatural powers and always receives validation from those around them. Their false self, just like a policeman, will take care that the rest of us recognize narcissists' supposed merits and will react aggressively if this is not going to happen according to narcissists' expectations.
The fear of intimacy is another definitory element of this personality disorder, which a narcissist uses in order to prevent the nightmarish possibility that others might realize who he or she really is, and, as a consequence, they might quit appreciating the narcissist according to their expectations. In the intimacy, the narcissist would remain just a simple human being and moreover, one with a pretty consistent amount of flaws. They can't risk something like that. Narcissistic supply, is narcissists' meaning of life, and of course, comes from the people around them, who should adapt to their needs. In a rather desperate fashion, a narcissist takes care that everybody grants them the validation they yearn for, just like a junkie. Everything is fine as long as they receive their precious dose of recognition, but when the validating behavior stops, a whole new story takes place, they turn into a vengeful and merciless hero and they will make sure everyone gets what they deserve for telling them no. The pathological narcissistic space refers to the group of people who gravitate around the narcissist. Their fan base represents the objective proof of their personal grandiosity and their, the narcissist has the role of the great spiritual leader, a guru enlightened by divine inspiration. The group that forms the pathological space will share their beliefs and will grant them, at any time, the recognition they need. The grandiosity gap exists because between the false self and the reality there is this huge and dangerous distance. The greatest and constant fear of a narcissist is that, when they least expect, they will reveal themselves in a less than perfect light. This will always keep them under pressure, complaining, threatening, insulting or preparing for attentively mastered revenge. Approach Avoidance Cycle. The cycle describes the evolution of a narcissist's relationships between idealization and deprecation. Their approaching is, at some point, followed by withdrawal because of their terrible fear of coming across less than perfect. Thus, their relationships become torture, a long line of brutal experiments. The narcissist is not the right choice for a relationship in which the emotional stability is a major concern. The magical thinking refers to the act of self-deception and it is expressed through a host of lies and wrong ideas about success and recognition which the narcissist is so fond of. They live in an aristocratic world and they don't understand meritocracy. In their little pink universe they deserve the best things as their birthright. There's no place for responsibility here, for merit or talent, let alone effort. The childlike demeanor represents one of the two masks a narcissist wears out of fear of intimacy. The other one is that of the sect leader which we previously mentioned. Sometimes, due to their lack of confidence and because of their poor emotional skills, the narcissist has the possibility to revive their inner child and live their childhood again and again. Thus, they own an excellent cover and they're able to avoid tough social roles which involve responsibility and effort. Narcissistic compulsion is a term which refers to the desperate efforts made by the narcissist for the only reason of creating a solid impression around them, a legend, we might say, unfortunately, a fake one, most of the times. Therefore, the narcissist is a people junkie and they can be socially useful, through education and the influence of a good social environment, but the key to understanding their goals might surprise you. They just want to get their daily dose of narcissistic supply. Regina George is flawless. She has two Fendi purses and a silver Lexus. I hear her hair is insured for $10,000. We hope this video presentation has been a useful tool for understanding and recognizing the narcissistic traits in people, and helped you acknowledge the tremendous influence narcissistic personality disorder nowadays has on human society. Thank you for your time.
We'll see you in the next one. Until then, be the best version of yourself. So sorry, Miranda. I actually did concern last night. Of your incompetence do not interest me. You're not anybody in America unless you're on TV. There are some people who never know who they are or who they want to be until it's too late. And that is a real tragedy in my book. Thank you.